Howdy folks, how you doing? You good? Good. Sit down and let Papa Cobra tell you a story. <laughs> oh, this, this story. Um, <laughs> uh, I have been hounded, I'm not even joking, hounded. Here it is. Uh, I'll, I'll show it to you real briefly. Here's a text correspondence. I mean, literally hounded by this person about not taking a very high risk, low reward job. And what I mean by that is, as you guys know, I do cyber security. I do penetrating testing, that's my specialty, I, I do pen testing. I don't do it on this rig, I don't do it on the other rig, I don't do it on the third rig. Those rigs are, they have their own roles that they play. This rig is my streaming and gaming rig. Second rig is my video editing rig. And it's also my painting rig, so that when I'm doing my paint streams, I don't have to mess around with settings or anything, I can just go in, hit stream, and I'm good to go. And my third rig is my mass storage or NAS or, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, in, anything that's over a certain amount of gigabytes in size, I automatically up like move it over to that rig because it has very, very, very large SS uh, uh, two two 500 gig SSDs. One's for the operating system. One's for uh, um, mandatory backups of certain software and images and music and whatnot that you have, uh, especially distro images of uh, operating systems. And then it's got two, uh, uh, it's got, no, one, two, three, three, one terabyte regular spinning media. It's the only spinning media I've got left. In fact, one of my previous hard drives died, and I've got to uh, uh, e-waste it. And, um, again, that has the majority of, like, my Steam games as backups, things of that nature. Uh, I still let my steam connect to the internet and download and update someone but it never never it download uh, downloads and installs the full raw game anymore why i've got it as a backup and then i just update it from there um and well because te technically they're in a sub network within a network so my, my roommates don't see the computers uh, the only computer that can see them is this one, and that's because I use software. Uh, it, it, it's now called Synergy. It used to be called Barrier. What that does is it allows my keyboard and mouse to be used on the other computers that are set up to be slaves, and my main computer to be set up as, as the master. And so I can use this keyboard and this mouse to control both those computers at the same time as this one. All I've got to do is move my mouse pointer off the screen. Like to the left, it's controlled in computer one. Up top, it's controlled in computer two. Does that make sense? As long as barrier is activated. Right now, barrier is deactivated because I don't need to do anything on those on those machines. They have keyboards and mouses attached to them on the off chance that I don't want to use barrier, but I use barrier. Uh, Synergy is the updated version of barrier. It also allows you to, tr to transfer files. So, uh, case in point, if you've got a paid subscription to Synergy, not sponsored, uh, you can then take a file of a certain size. I think they, their cap is four gigabytes, I think. It's, I know it's a ridiculous, weird number. And you can literally just like right-click, copy, move over, right-click, paste. It literally shares your um, clipboard, your, your, your things of that nature. One second. Just go. Got to wet my whistle. And um, once you've done that, and it's fun software. I enjoy doing it. Well, anyway, let me get back to the job offer. So this company who is based out of China, that's red flag number one, um, are using British uh, recruitment agencies, red flag number two, and they're promising all these benefits, red flag number three, and all, all these, oh, you, you, you know, you can choose your time off, you can do this, you can do that, you get access to spas and blah, 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 blah. We even get you an apartment and da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. 
Okay. What's the downside? First things first, you've got to ask, what's the downside? If they're willing to do all this up front, okay, is it because my skills are good? I'm still only level, barely level, I've just left level one, I'm intro level two. So I'm, uh, really, I'm not that good. Now, there's a uh, Instagram uh, uh, um, entertainer by the name of Ryan. He has got his full university diploma and whatnot, and he does some amazing work. Ryan, shout out to you. You're amazing, dude. I love your content. Um, funny guy. And um, so, but he would be the sort of person that would be asked for this, not me. And I was like, why are they bothering me with this shit? You know? And it turns out it's because I've got military clearance. I'm like, I haven't done anything in the British Army for 10 plus years. I mean, I advise museums and stuff once in a while when they're, they've got something added to their collection. And they're like, um, what's missing from this? Yeah, and, and they'll ask me because it's usually a vehicle I, I drove or I repaired or served in or whatever. And I'm like, well, you're missing the med kit. You, you're missing, you know, and it's just minor things that the British Army for some reason take. You know, it's like, okay, so a Browning 303, not, not, not. You know, not the 50 cal, da da da. You know, I'm like, that's a placeholder. That's, and I ask them, are they placeholders? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, that's a 303 Browning. That's not what we used to do. You know, and I point, I just point out small little things, you know, that they, I mean, you can buy a deactivated British, uh, um, uh, 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 uh machine gun and, and whatnot for a collector or a museum pretty easy as long as you say prove that you're for a museum you give me your 401 uh, not 401 um and you give them a specific code that you get when you registered as a charity and they're like oh yeah you are a charity da, 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 da. it's for a museum da, 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 da. you know you're not a you know crazy gun dealer or whatever you know mm. back to the job offer keep going on side chats well When I pointed out that it's a bit too good to be true to the recruiter, he said, what do you mean? I'm like, you're willing to get me a two-bedroom apartment where I don't have to pay rent. I don't have to pay utilities. So I'm living there rent-free, utility-free, for the length of my employment contract. So and the minimum contract was two years. Two years up to four with the possibility of extending it and i just pointed out all oh, these little minor minor problems and the fact that i would have to go to the chinese embassy because it's in china I like an Asian woman like any other Western man. A uh, no, thank you. That is the opposite country and the opposite direction of where I want to go. So I've updated my LinkedIn to say that I only want to work for Western companies. And now all of a sudden, the same recruiter, same phone number, the same everything, has changed the company's name. <laughs> it's the same fucking company. <laughs> I'm not stupid. And I'm just like, look, listen, Linda. Linda, 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 listen, listen, Linda, listen. I just, I'll let him say his piece. I'm not that sort of person that will just string someone along. I will let him say his piece. And if I am in... It, 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 if this does turn out to be a job in America, i.e. where I want to go, then yeah. I'll, I'll look at taking it. It's probably going to be in like Silicon Valley. So like California, California or freaking Seattle. God, I hate Washington State. Ugh, I hate Washington State and I hate California. Um... But if it's a remote pen testing job, fine by me. Just means I've got to travel 
Okay. Fair enough. As long as I'm still in the US. I mostly want to stick to uh, center states like Texas, Oklahoma. Further, the furthest west I will go is probably New Mexico. That's the furthest I'll go. East Coast, Georgia. It does get really cold though in Georgia in the winters. Like really cold. And the crime rednecks. Swings and roundabouts, really. Swings and roundabouts. So, yes. Mm. Lovely. I've got a friend coming down Saturday. Today's Thursday. I've got a friend coming down Saturday. Uh, who I haven't seen in forever. And we're going to be hanging out. In fact, I even got a birthday present for them. They are a huge fan of Drop Dead Fred, the British comedy movie. Uh, it's uh, Rick Mail. And I managed to snag... Yes, that is Rick Mao's John Hancock before he passed away. So I snagged this for them. So they are going to be fucking blown away that I've actually got them a Rick Mao. John Hancock, God rest his soul. Funny man. Snowface! 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 I fucking love Drop Dead Fred. One of my favourite comedies as a kid. It's not face. It's not face. That used to be <laughs> that used to be my nickname for everyone after that movie. It's not face. <laughs> uh, I miss him. I miss Rick. Mm. So I've got that. Um, oh, and my um, <laughs> my, my fucking pension plan keeps changing. Uh, this is from my new um. I guess I better cover the majority of that up. Um, this is my um, pension plan from from Avia, and uh, it keeps changing constantly. They keep going, oh, oh, we've 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 got you a whopping extra fifty one pounds. Okay. Apparently, I'm eligible to retire. In, on March 17th, 2045. I'll probably cash in all of my retirement early. Not going to lie. Cash it in early. Um, still no news on the bastard that stole my um, crypto. I don't think I'm ever going to get it back. I'm not going to lie. I'm, and I'm, I've, I've learned to let it go. I have learned to let it go. It just means I've got to start from scratch. Only thing is, I'm not starting from scratch. I'm starting from a point of experience. So uh, that's what a lot of people don't seem to understand. When they fail, and this is the thing, when you do fail, and you're going to fail, guys. Life is going to kick you in the balls, whether you've got a pair or not. Okay, Life's going to kick you in the balls. And when it does, you can either lay on the ground and cry, or you can stand up. Take the hit and say to him, thank you for making me stronger. That's all you can do. And um, I refuse to I refuse to be a victim. I absolutely refuse to be a victim. Oh, my headphones died. As you guys know, I am a huge audiophile. I have my Samsung SR850s. Um, well, they're dead. The, it's a no manufacturing defect, but the cabling connecting to the can is it's gone, it's dead. And then to add insult to injury, the connector here died. Again, apparently a common known issue, but these have not been factory recalled. Ofcom. 
Apparently, if these are a known factory issue, I mean, I could repair them. I could open up the can, strengthen the connectors, you know, put down a tie-down crimp in there and hold it down. That's fine. And I could do the same with the other connector. It's just, it's so fucking finicky. What's my time worth? So, yeah, I mean, I love these. These are oh, the crushed velour. Mm, just, oh. I legit would listen to audiobooks with this headset on, on that bed, and just lay there and just, oh. But unfortunately, these went the way of the dodo. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll probably fix them. I'm not going to lie. I will probably fix them because it's, it's what I do. It's what I do. And of course, I went to my local b &Ms, and what did they have? They had these. Um, these are Razor, Kraken, something or others. Um, these are the, and I've got the name right here. Oh, here's your right then. Uh, Razor model number 040295. Uh, just says Kraken X something or other. Can't read it, it's too small. But yeah, they're not bad. Um, and this, this apparently comes with a 7.1 surround sound thing. And yet you have to register the product and you have to jump through a whole bunch of fucking hoops. If the software is free, just put a fucking download link in it. Which, by the way, does not work with any other fucking EQ equipment. So it's software 7.1. It's not physical hardware 7.1. Because if it was hardware 7.1, it wouldn't have that stupid little 35 millimeter jack. Not just one. It would have one for center, for left, for right, for back, for front. But it doesn't. It just has the one, which means it's emulated. <laughs> Fucking hate emulated. Give me the real McCoy or fuck right off. Mm. Like I said, I am a audiophile. I like my music. So I've got to finish cleaning. Oh, oh, I've got, I've made progress on the German army. I was supposed to go to a bolt action tournament uh, Saturday, but with my friend coming down, I've like, oh, I'll, I'll restart the season. So yeah, I'm gonna miss out on five, maximum seven points on my bolt action tournament account. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Neither here nor there. I don't do it for the for the tournament plays or anything else. I do it just because I like themed armies, and you can only play a themed army, i.e., based on a real army, uh, in uh, sanctioned uh, bolt action tournaments. So yeah, there's that. Mm. Oh, lovely jubbly. And um, yeah, so fingers crossed for me, guys. I do have a. Uh, I have a lottery ticket. It's for the Euro Millions. Uh, so yeah, hopefully if I win, you'll know if I've won, because I'll do a video. I'll let you guys know that I've, that I've won and I've done a video. I mean, I'm not going to be Mr. Beast and do like that. We're giving away a Ferrari! No, no, just, no. I'll be like, okay, see all this stuff? You, 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 I'm not going to lie. You will know, because I won't be here. <laughs> I... We'll do a couple of videos on the road using my GoPro and uh, using a few other things where I'm on a train, you know, seeing my family. You know, ridiculously, this is what I would do. I would buy my mother a home, like a beautiful bungalow, and I would make sure that she would never need any kind of home help care ever. Like she would have a round-the-clock home care it literally live in nurse and i would pay for that um my younger brother i'd pay off his mortgage yeah i'd pay off the mortgage on his house my sister i would pay off the mortgage on her house my daughter i would set up a trust fund my nieces I would and nephews. I would set up small trust funds for them as well. Um, what 
what else that's pretty much it um i would ask my i would ask my daughter's mum if she wanted one thing just one thing yeah and if she says yeah i want this i'll get it for her and after that i will say toodles to you uk i don't ever want to see you again no offense but if you sink into the ocean and become the next atlantis i won't shed a fucking tear adios and i've only ever had a first class ticket in my life but i would do a first class ticket out of the uk oh yeah i'll take all of this stuff in here i mean everything that's mine i would box it up crate it up put it on a shipping container you know have it shipped tracked with like air tags and all that fun shit you know have it tracked shipped so that and, I, I, and the funny thing is yesterday i was for some reason i, I got a flea up my ass about looking for a house and in, in, in a state I'm not going to say where and I found one and it's just perfect for my needs and you know universe is trying to tell me something I hope thank you God thank you dad you know and I would um, buy it and tell them that's my address right there right fucking there. and to guarantee that it goes through smoothly there's uh, some things you can do to speed up your uh, uh, visa process um, one of which is what's known as an entrepreneurial ship visa. And what you can do with that is you, you do need a, uh, uh, a lawyer to do this. I would have a immigration customs and enforcement specialist lawyer. And I would have them go over my business plan, which I have. I do have a business plan. And I just lack the finances to get my business off the ground. Um. And you've got to invest four hundred thousand dollars. Yes, four hundred grand. You've got to invest four hundred grand minimum, and you can you have to hire seventy percent U.S. workers. It's fine by me. I can do that. I'll do that. And take this business plan, and I would, uh, I legit would, I would start up my business and I would <laughs> use that to get my visa and once I've got my visa and I'm through because an entrepreneurial ship visa takes about I've seen I've seen them process as fast as 14 hours and yet I've also seen them go sorry about this I've also seen them go as slow as 14 days because they've got to do background checks and make sure your business plan is legitimate and thing whatnot. Mine is. It's actually based off my family member's business that they've got here in the UK. I wanted to do an American branch of what they've got established here in the UK. And um, and so. get the entrepreneurship visa which does give you a social security number straight away you do your pledge of allegiance in the embassy it literally fast tracks you cuts down four years to mere days so when people say you can buy your u.s citizenship they're not joking but there are certain things that you have to follow i.e you have to have an established business background you have to have certain and i have that I've I've been an entrepreneur in various businesses in the past for almost twenty years. Uh, at one point, I owned half a nightclub with my uncle. I I'm a freelance cybersecurity specialist now. I'm I've always worked. I owned my own body shop. I did did car customizing and stuff uh, when I lived in Utah. So it is what it is, you know. And. Once you've got that established, you do your Pledge of Allegiance, they do a background check. Well, they do the background check first. Then you do your Pledge of Allegiance. Um, then they give you a U.S. passport right there and then. They'll say to you, okay, 
wait a couple of, wait, wait, I think it's like a seven day wait. That's where, like I said, you can go as fast as 14 hours if you're already, uh, uh, got a, a, a passport that they'll, they'll they'll validate but if you don't i do but if you don't they will have to wait seven minimum seven days to process your passport and once they're done it's yours it's a u.s passport with your boat race on it you know with your face on it you can go through you don't have to go through that second line where it's like for non-us citizens please queue here for us citizens please queue here you know, it's not that you can just boop, 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 boop. hell i could even take a private plane Granted, I would have to take it from London Heathrow to Ireland, then from Ireland to Ontario, Canada, then from Canada, I can then take a private jet. Because again, certain jets have a certain fuel range. And take another private jet from there to another private airport where I don't even have to in, in, in where I don't even have to go through customs and enforcement. Private airports, you there is a I no again. Let me explain. There is an INS officer at a private airport, okay, but it's at his, their discretion whether or not they want to go through the rigmarole of, of processing you. Nine times out of ten, they don't. They just don't. So, but the point is, uh, that's what I would do. But so, pack up my stuff. Do I, I would vlog it. I would do little vlog videos where I'm, I'm I'm packing up this. You know, this is packed. That's packed. This is packed. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I'll probably even buy this house. I wouldn't live here, but I'd buy this house and use it as an investment base, which means I turn it into rental property like it is now. Keep it as a rental property. I wouldn't rent this room out. This room would permanently not be rented out. I would use this as a as a uh, uh, an office of sorts. Uh, storage slash office of sorts because this place maxes out at four people three people four people well, there's five of us here and the house is shut the house is showing signs of stress cracks because there's too many people in here um so i wouldn't rent this place this room out i would turn it into private i'd turn it into storage yeah i would turn it into storage uh but i would update the house uh, update the windows, update the uh, uh, the wet room because the shower we've got in there is meh. Uh, put a damn fucking water filter on because the water is very harsh here. It's very very scaly here. Um, sometimes it feels like you've got like a scouring pad. It's, that's the water. So sort that out. Put a, a, a softener in there. Uh, what else would I do? Uh, update the up upgrade the kitchen so it's got at least a um, a dishwasher. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, yeah, I'd modernise the house a little bit. I'd probably get rid of the another bedroom so there's only a, so it's only a three bedroom place. So yeah, I'd have to kick out one of the other people. The front room, knock that out because. They've converted what was the front room into another bedroom, which I just think is just stupid. I will knock that out, turn that back into a living room, so you've got much more open space, a more livable area, so that people who are here, you know, can enjoy it. Huh? And that's what I would do. And I would, I would lock the rent to where it's at now. I wouldn't up it or lower it. I would lock it to where it's at. End of. That's what I do. And that way, if I ever have to come back to the UK. I've got a place to crash. Yeah, you know, I've got this. I'd, I mean, I'd leave a bed and stuff in here, but if I've got a place to crash, I could just come up in here and sleep and not worry about having to rent a hotel room or anything like that. So, yeah, that's what I would do. And it also be a nice little, little uh, uh, tax investment, a little haven. Uh, add it to the, uh, the, to the trust. And, uh, of course, because the business would be owned by the trust, the house would be owned by the trust. Uh, that way you're not paying uh, tax levies or, or anything like that. There's ways you can get around that. You don't have to be Donald Trump and have like a room full of lawyers to figure out how to, to get around certain certain tax liabilities and issues and, and, and whatnot. So anyway, so that's what I would do. And I would do a, a big fucking stream. I mean, a big fucking stream. I would... I would get all of my long-time viewers, and I mean this, I would get all of my long-time viewers, 
I would say to them, what are you doing for the next three days? Da, 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 give them the date. And if they say nothing, I'll say, okay, here's a plane ticket. Come, come, come here. I'll pick you up at the airport. <laughs> pick them up, have a big fucking party. You know, my friends, you know, people who I trust, care about, love, you know. Uh, then I'd be able to finally, and I mean this, finally, and sadly, go back to Utah, finish up the last of my business I've got over there, say goodbye to my friends properly. Then I would drive down Route 66 and enjoy myself this time. Last time I didn't get a chance to enjoy myself, but this time I would. This time I would. Then go to North Carolina, finish up my business I have there. And then I would go home to Texas. That's the state I want to live in is Texas. Let's see. Jesse James is in Texas. Uh, Joe Rogan is in Texas. <laughs> Stephen Crowder is in Texas. Three people I do envy. Three people who I consider... Yes, they've had their ups and downs. They've had their, their pasts. But the point is, they've they've made... They made mistakes, but they've corrected themselves. And they're good men. They are very good men. Joe Rogan, I don't think he's made any mistakes. I mean, the dude's a fucking savage. Joe, uh, uh, Joe Rogan's a savage. Um... Yeah, Stephen Crowder, yeah, he's he's had a bit of controversy here and there. Don't care. He's still a good man. Takes care of his kids, takes care of his families, take care of his takes care of his co workers. Don't get me wrong, yeah, I know he has screwed over some people in the past. We all have. You know, but that's business. It's not personal. It's just business. You know? Um Jesse James, yeah. I would too. Have you seen Sandra Bullock? I mean, he's with Bonnie Rotten right now. And you know what? I couldn't be more happy for him. I really couldn't. They've got a beautiful little son together. He's fucking adorable. Oh my God. He takes care of her. She takes care of him. That's all that matters. That's all you want in someone. You want someone who's going to be there for you. You want someone who's going to be fucking, you know, who's going to be the, the queen to your king. I'm sorry, but you do, and I've, I have I, I have to say, I'm lucky, I've got that. I'm not going to say who, because they, they, they value their privacy, but I've got that. This king's got that. This king's got that. And that's my point. And I so, in a heartbeat, would call Texas or Georgia home. Or find a state slap bang in the middle. That way I can go to both states either or. To see my family and my friends. But that's what I would do. Either or. Either be the either, either or. That's it. End of. <laughs> Jesus, this is probably the longest coffee cover I've done this year. I still got coffee, so. And so, fingers crossed for me. Knock on wood. Please. Knock on wood. So if I do win... I would let the world know. <laughs> if I do win, I will let the world know. That's for sure. I would be able to look my landlord in the eye, my new landlord, by the way, be able to look him in the eye and say, you paid how much for this place? Yeah, I'll give you that. Chewy! <coughs> ah, hey, Stephen. I will pay you that, what you paid for this place. In fact, you know what? I'll pay 10% on top, just to get you out of my head. get a decent contractor in here, one that I trust, one that's highly recommended from one of my family members, and um, get a quote, an itemized quote, You will, that's what you want, you want an itemized quote, not just a quote, but an itemized quote, okay, and 
I would then tell everyone here, guys, you're going to have to find somewhere else for now while the construction goes on. Once the construction is complete, you can all move back in. I won't ask for anything else, etc, 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 etc. That's what I would do. I'd convert this from a five bedroom to a three bedroom. There's too many people here. Too many people. I wouldn't be here. I would be in Texas. I would be in Texas and I would be shopping for two things. Mm. In 1942, there were enemies. That's all I need to say. But in my collection, there would be point of pride. And I mean that. I would I would want an M4 E6. M M4 A6 E8. An Easy 8 Sherman. Right there. And over there. I want a Panzerkampfwagen. Schwei. Ost. Say. Panzer 3. J1. Either a J1 or a J2. Not a G. Not an F, not the F2. I mean, the F2 had a good gun, that's about it. I want the backbone of the German army because Panzer III, Stugs came from Panzer III's, Yak Panzers came from Stugs. Like I said, Panzer III was the German army's version of the Sherman. It just was. To me, it was. And to a lot of other Germans, they, they would tell you it was. And I would have both of them in a garage, one in one corner, one in the other, all ready to go, ready to fire up for me to drive around on my property and have fun. And at the same time, in the center, I want four, four hydraulic lifts that's capable of lifting both those tanks. But same, they're not going to be used on those tanks. But I will have my project cars on those. I will have my old Omega on one. I will have my 51, no, 51 or 54. 54 Ford Victoria on another one. I would have, I would find Jazabel. I'd find my Mustang. I know she's in Colorado somewhere. I would find my Mustang. Buy her back. Even though I know she's been turned into a, to a parts car and she's probably been crushed. I will find out where her remains are. Grab her VIN number and I would resurrect her from the ground up. I don't care how much it costs me. I would do it. Because she was my ride or die. She was the love of my life. I'm not even kidding. That car was my love. My baby. <laughs> And then next to it would be a Magnum SRT8. Yes, a Dodge, but it wouldn't be Dodge powered. That's all I'm gonna say. It would not be. It would not be Hemi powered. It would not be any of that. What it would be is either Coyote powered or LS powered. And I'm more leaning towards the coyote because I put a coyote. I would put a coyote in the Mustang as well. So and in the and and in the uh, Victoria. So that's what I would do. And I would have John Cozzy, Cozzy, Cozzy Engineering, the legend. God rest his soul, John Cozzy. I would have that man, his company, do my motors. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. My cars would have shit and get. Now, the old Omega, that would be LS powered. And it would probably be from. See, now, I got, now I'm now I'm debating. Would I go with John Cozzy or would I go with Jack Roush? Because Roush Racing did a lot of the Celine Mustang motor work. The petrol head in me wants to say John Cozzy. I mean it. 
Because John Cozzy makes some serious SR-71 heads. Makes some serious power on a Ford motor. They took a, they took a truck 460LE motor on Power Nation. Threw on John Cozzy heads. And a few other little tweaks. And that thing was pushing a thousand foot pounds of torque. And I think it was like 1150 horsepower. And then they added a shot of nitrous to it. And it went to like... 1100 and something foot pounds of torque and oh god i think i want to say 1300 horsepower and up it skyrocketed and that's because john cozzy knows that what he's doing john cozzy's the cozzy cozzy racing cozzy racing john cozzy racing the entire family started doing fords and they know fords inside and out the valve reliefs everything else and just, just i'm just like putting that in a 53 Ford Victoria. <laughs> I would, I'm not going to lie, I probably would call out Mike Finnegan. I would call out Finney. I'd be like, Finney, you're 55 versus my 54. Ford Chevy. Even though technically yours is Hemi powered. <laughs> and I would, I would do Hot Rod Drag Week. I would do, I would even start my own version of Hot Rod Drag Week. Uh, I would do it so it goes down the whole of Route 66 from one side to the other. So, so from one side of the US to the other. Find a whole bunch of drag strips along the way. And say this is here, 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 and here. You know? That way you're helping all the businesses along the old Route 66. You're helping out all the racetracks along the old Route 66. You, you just, I just... I love the idea of Route 66, Two Lane Blacktop, one of my favourite movies. I can see why uh, Mike, I can see why Mike Finnegan wanted a 55. And don't get me wrong, I, I love 55 Chevys, I do. 55, 56, 57 Chevys, they're, they're beautiful cars, they are, they are beautiful cars, they're lovely to work on. But, I've been a Ford fan since I was 8 years old. I mean it. I've told this story about how I became a Ford fan. But um, my Uncle Peter <laughs> showed up at my mum my mum and dad's house. Well, it's my nan's house. On my birthday, my eighth birthday. After importing in a gold on gold 67 GT Mustang with a three, uh, 351 Cleveland. Automatic C is it was a C six automatic? I know yeah, it was an automatic. And I woke up to the sounds of that engine roaring through some beautiful straight pipes. Just and I was like I am I'm, I'm legit getting goosebumps just remembering it. And I stuck my face to that glass. Boom. And I saw my Uncle Peter and I was like, <gasps> run downstairs. Bear in mind, this is March. It's freezing fucking cold. I'm running outside. No shoes, no sock, no t-shirt. Literally still wearing my Fraggle Rock fucking, like, bottom half of my pajamas. Run out there. And, and, and I literally start walking around this car. <laughs> Lizzie. He named the car after his girlfriend at the time, Lizzie. And I was just like, soaking it all in. Like. <sighs> and he's like, do you want to go for a ride? I was like. They didn't bother looking at my mum and my dad. I was like, uh-huh. He opens up the door. I get in. Lap belt. And he just goes, hold on. Leaves it in neutral. He neutral dumps it. Best burnout ever. <laughs> Rubber patch for a good fucking hundred feet. Wakes up the entire fucking street. Everyone's pissed and on an uproar. Most of the petrol heads are like, yeah! Everyone else is like, no. my dad was just like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uncle gets to the... the where 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 we lived there was a little roundabout. He gets a roundabout. He literally I swear it's the first time I've ever seen 
drifting. He goes, he screeches all the way around the roundabout, comes all the way back, and I mean, he's just going at it, just fucking going at it. And the smoke, the smell of the rubber, everything else. Get there. He's laughing. My Uncle Peter's laughing his ass off. I'm laughing my ass off. I'm fucking ecstatic. It's the best birthday ever for me. And probably has been ever since. Not going to lie. And. Yeah. I was a Ford fan from that point on. Bing. Not Ford UK. Don't get me wrong. I do love an Escort. I do love a. I do love a Capri. Hell, I even love a Granada. I know the boxy thing, but the point is, I liked American Fords, and I fell in love. I didn't. I. I genuinely was like, so when's this car coming out? My dad. My, my uncle was like, it's not. This is an American car. I was like, so that's why the steering wheel's on the other side. He's like, yeah. I was like, oh, and I fell down the rabbit hole. Started looking at all these Petrolhead magazines and everything else. Because there was a big rush in the 80s where everything was being imported in. Because it was cheaper to import a car into the UK than it was to buy a British car. Thank you, Tories. And Was it Tories back then? Thatcher? Yeah, Tories. And so... Everyone... And my dad even imported in a Cadillac. Big old boat Cadillac. Because it was cheaper. To import in a British, an American car. Granted, they rusted like crap because of our salt roads. So if you didn't, if you didn't, like this is why you can't order. If you get a JDM car, if you get a Japanese manufactured car imported in, get it fucking coated because they don't coat them in Japan because they don't salt the roads in Japan. So do yourself a favor. If you ever order a JDM car into the UK or any country they get snow and they use salt so especially America America UK things of that nature get them covered get get them un- get the undercarriage done get the subframe done get the connecting get everything fucking protected just get it protected just get it protected don't care how much it costs just get it protected you'll fucking thank me there's so many imported in Toyota Supras I have seen that within a year have to have a complete off-frame restoration because the, the undercarriage is just completely just eaten away because they never got it fucking covered. Get it protected. That's all I need to say. This is the longest coffee time with Club Brother I've done. And, and, I, and you know, here. Coffee's done. Uh, video's done. I could talk for hours, but excuse me. I'm not going to bother. Anyway. Adios, muchachos.